Hi everybody and welcome to this uh, EMA COVID webinar. So I'm George Valiotis, I'm the Executive Director here at the European Health Management Association. In terms of practical information for making today flow smoothly, um, we've muted everyone's microphones. We're sorry for that, but it just means that you can hear the speakers more clearly. However, I do welcome you to, to, um, to speak at any time. So um, by chatting in the chat box, you can ask any of your questions in the chat box at any time. And once the speakers have finished presenting, then we'll be able to come to those uh, at that point. Um, we do record these webinars um, and we make them available um, on the, via our website. On our website, you'll find a richness of information. So any resources that are mentioned today, any other follow-up information, copies of the uh, presentations, you'll be able to access um, on that link that you see there. And we'll also email that to you so everything's available. So if you're someone who's not so good at taking notes, we do that job for you. And we also live tweet about this. So if you don't follow us already on Twitter, um, look out for us on at EMA Info. Um, so the agenda for today is we're going to hear from two incredible speakers, Sabrina Montante, um, who's going to talk to us for five minutes about the Two Reach project and its strategic research agenda. She'll introduce us to really how this project has come together, all the elements of it. Um, and then followed by um, Marius Ungurianu, and uh, he will speak about how do you put the strategic research agenda into practice. And then after these two short presentations, we'll have a question and answer um, with you guys. So, um, so Marius, are you, are you, oh no, Sabrina, sorry, you're speaking first. And I'm going to um, stop my screen sharing so that we can introduce to you, handing over to you. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, I can speak, uh, waiting for the slides from, from um, George. So, um, I mean, just a brief introduction, then I will let uh, my colleague Marish to go more in details in the, uh, the strategic research agenda to read. What I can say is that uh, definitely uh, for us, for to reach is a very great opportunity to be speaking today. I say that on behalf of the consortium, on behalf of the coordinating team, COVID-19 emergency has highlighted the importance of cooperation across Europe, okay. and not only, I would say, across the globe. Working with China is, uh, is needed. Help. All right, thanks everybody. It's okay. okay. Supporting health systems and addressing the increasing challenges and the need for identifying the COVID-19 emergency drug, and not only, I would say across the globe, what to support the, 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 the development of innovation, supporting our systems and the transferability of uh, this innovation across countries. So even before this pandemic, we're facing common challenges. You can move the slide, George, please. Um, a, a perfect. So the problem was urgent even before COVID-19 pandemic started and health system. Um, so this is just a list of challenges that I'm now going to uh, to mention. Um, just briefly, the, I would just like to, to make clear that all these challenges were, were present even before COVID-19. What COVID-19 has done is revealed, really has shown even more the relevance of these challenges. We saw that population aging were those that were more impacted by the COVID-19 crisis that the, and the pandemic. We know that they, are, they faced isolation, so it's not just they were being impacted by the virus per se, but the consequences of the, of the virus. And we know that we need to accelerate advances in biomedical technology and we need to have systems ready to absorb this these the new technologies and new uh, biomedical innovations. We know that consumer expectations are growing. We do, we do know that, and I would actually stress this point more, and I'm sure Marius will do the same, that the major challenges faced by health and care professionals that are facing shortages, frustration, and even distribution is coming very clear now. We've all been uh, clapping uh, healthcare professionals um, during the, the most difficult phase of this pandemic, and we don't, we cannot just uh, do that. We have to do more to make 
sure that they can work in the best conditions and things that are 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 made in a way that that they can actually make the best of their professionalism. And then we have persistence right in health inequalities and inequities, and we saw that even more with the COVID-19 um, across the countries and in, within the same country with the, the differences among the regions as well. And we saw indeed the financial pressures on economies. So the COVID-19 has shown the vulnerability of our societies and there is clear need to increase the capacity of our current health and care system to, in, terms, in terms of better use of space. So the increased capacity of health and care systems in terms of better use of space, uh, staff and supplies, and there is much room for improvement in terms of prevention, vigilance, reactivity, coordination, information exchange, logistics, overall organization, importantly, cooperation and solidarity. I decided to really um, report this OECD uh, sentence from the report of 2020 because I think that pretty much summarized the most relevant um, points that need to be looked at. And uh, the positive lesson that we get COVID-19 is indeed the need for cooperation. And to really understood that, you can move to the next slide, even before COVID-19, because uh, the, the question of something that we uh, saw even before and the need of actually um, look at um, the challenges as a complex one needs actually the response that is complex and look at the key issue that the organization have to incorporate the president in this. And we need also to think about on how to transfer this innovation of the countries and within the same country. So that was actually a goal of to reach even before COVID. So to reach is indeed a coordination and support action that has been funded by 2020 and it provides useful conceptual frameworks for research and innovation supporting healthcare systems innovation. So um, what I would like to stress, and I will do it briefly because, because then we can move to the next presentation, is that what really Turich is trying to do is to provide conceptual frameworks, okay, for research and innovation. It's in, a Horizon 2020 funded project. It was funded in 2016 and it was really anticipating things that we, we are discussing quite extensively now in this situation and I think that we can really benefit out of this work that's been developed by the project because what we have done is to really focus on conceptual frameworks for research innovation, try to identify innovation in our system and see how we can and provide conceptually and methodologically uh, ways to really learning from service and policy innovation and the condition needed to transfer this across the country. Yes, so the strategic research agenda proposes two, um, two interlinked types of priority research needs, okay? So one reflects the main substantive service and policy areas in which more service and policy innovation is needed and the second one identifies the main research input needed to inform the potential transfer and joint development of service and policy innovation. So how we reach that? So basically, um, the strategic research agenda was informed by systematic analysis and um, from policy documents and through consultations roundtable across the member states and throughout Europe-wide stakeholder surveys. This was, the, was done across the years by, uh, and there was done, the, the work was led by colleagues from NIVO and colleagues from the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies with the support of a different um, organization, colleagues from funding bodies like ZON, from Port and from Sweden, from colleagues from, from, from Slovenia, from the University of Malta. So it was really a team work and we have done even a consultation after the strategic research agenda was published. So we can say that there is a quite solid piece of work that is really identifying the most relevant uh, areas in which research should be focusing on in the next years and what is relevant to, to consider when we consider the transferability of, of uh, innovation. So this is actually the core of our strategic 
strategic research agenda, you, in which you can see the list of priorities areas that have been identified on one hand. On the other way, the, um, the, the question that needs to be addressed when we speak about the process of transferring services and innovation. So what we need to understand, we need to understand the system context, we need to understand the impact of system structure on transfer of service and policy innovation is needed to inform transfer. And we need to understand the impact in the end of service and policy innovation health system performance. These will all, by answering, by addressing these questions, we can consider quite solidly happening a transferability of a service and innovation, service and policy innovation. Because the priorities in the end areas can change, but those are always questions that need to be addressed if we want happening in terms of ability of so, uh, the transferability across Europe. Next slide, the last one. So now all the work of to reach is coming to, will be ending in November. Uh, what will do the project is informing the future, future work of the European Commission of Member States in this field of research. So it's going to inform a, a possible partnership on, in this field together with other initiatives as well. And what we've been trying, I think, will be interesting to, to address today is questions for the audience. We've been trying to address it throughout the project implementation and even into the future uh, work at European level is really what is the EU wide added value of research cooperation in this field? What, by working together, what would we can reach more? Perhaps Marius will also have to address this question. What we need to know to learn, understand better from other countries. Where are the knowledge gaps? What to do to move forward and whom? Avoid or overcome which obstacles? So these are really the questions that the project tried to address even through the consultation process. And perhaps Marius will support and we think that the future years will have to address. So thank you very much. I think it's, uh, it's already quite a lot. So these are the contacts. Any questions, I'm here and looking forward. Thanks a lot, George. Sorry yeah. for the connection. Thanks, Sabrina. I'm sorry that the connection um, um, caused trouble for you. Um, but um, if people have any questions, do put them up now. Marius, if you want to get your presentation ready, and while you get it ready, I'll just remind people that, um, that if you've got questions, put them up now. When we get to the end of the presentation, Sabrina will be able to answer them uh, then. And um, also Sabrina's presentation, I'm pretty sure we'll just confirm this, will be available on our website afterwards. Um, and um, so you'll have all the information there. Um, thank you, Sabrina, for that great presentation. And now I'll hand over to Marius. Uh, so thanks, George, um, uh, so much for, for having me over. And thanks for, for everyone uh, taking part in this meeting. I'll try to be as brief as possible um, so that we, uh, we have a bit more time um, and maybe to, to discuss with the uh, participants. Um, I've put uh, uh, together a couple of slides um, just to give you a, a better sense of what the street, a strategic research agenda is uh, developed by, by the two reach consortium and how it can be used, especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, uh, just to uh, uh, just to begin with, um, we have um, uh, seen that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has has uh, has meant a lot for for health systems. And um, just a couple of the things that we have seen happening uh, since the pandemic has started is that we we've seen and this is in just a uh, random order. Uh, we've seen lots of um, uh, digital uh, uh, tools being used in our health systems. Um, also, we've seen the need to to adjust hospital payment mechanisms. Uh, we've seen uh, in, in some countries um, the military involved in the response. Uh, we've seen that um, non-COVID-19 health service uh, delivery has, um, um, uh, has been um, reorganized in order to prioritize COVID-19 cases. Um, and also we have seen um, um, an expansion in the health workforce uh, surge capacity um, and also related to the health workforce um, uh, compensation for uh, health professionals. But also uh, we've seen great deal of efforts in our health systems to ensure um, mental health and the well-being of uh, 
uh, health professionals, especially those who have been at the forefront of, of um, um, COVID-19 uh, fight. Um, but also structuring uh, contact tracing operations, and we've seen several um, uh, models that, that have been uh, developed. As uh, Sabrina was uh, uh, saying, and this I, I'm just showing this for, for a little, uh, these are um, the uh, main priority. If you look at the uh, light blue uh, lines, you will see the main priority areas um, of the two reach strategic research agenda, but um, I will come back to this um, in a minute. So uh, Sabrina mentioned how we got to the strategic research agenda and I uh, just wanted to um, uh, dig in uh, just a little bit deeper because uh, the process has been really extensive and uh, as Sabrina mentioned, uh, it involved uh, three uh, main phases. One was a mapping of the policy documents and strategic roadmaps that were available Available at national and international level and then we had national roundtable expert consultations uh, we've had um, uh, in Romania we hosted it at the beginning of uh, 2018 and we engaged um, um, uh, a great number of stakeholders and then uh, we had an online consultation uh, for for a couple of weeks with the draft strategic research agenda and we reached um, around um, 600 responses um, not only from the EU but also uh, outside the EU like the, the US uh, Canada and Israel um, Sabrina already mentioned about these two uh, dimensions of the strategic research agenda so I will not go into further detail but just wanted to um, uh, have a second um, uh, to look at these uh, priorities and um, maybe from what you have seen uh, and what you have experienced by yourselves in your various capacities in the health system um, and if you try to overlap that with the uh, priorities that you, we identified in the um, strategic research agenda you will see that there's there's a great overlap you'll see that uh, we identified um, a person and population centered health service and systems as a priority and of course this is this is vital for the for the pandemic response we've seen integration of services as one of the priorities and the pandemic has shown that in, in many uh, of our health systems there is a, a lack of integration or insufficient integration. Um, we've seen uh, that there is a need of development and integration of long-term care services and the pandemic has shown that the long-term care sector has been severely hit especially um, in, in some of our countries. Redefining hospitals of course when we developed the, the research agenda maybe we didn't have in mind what, what that could mean but Paradoxically, for instance, in, in, in the uh, pandemic, we, we realized that um, at the end, it might not be that bad to have um, a high number of uh, beds per uh, um, 100,000 um, uh, population. Uh, we, um, in the strategic research agenda, we, um, we said that we need to strengthen primary health services and the pandemic has shown that there's, there has been a great uh, a deal of pressure on uh, primary care and, and community care. And so um, uh, this is just to, to, uh, um, uh, to, to show you that, as Sabrina was mentioning, uh, some of these areas that have been uh, uh, proven as, as vital during the pandemic uh, have been covered in the strategic research agenda, uh, agenda ahead of time. Um, so the, this is the, the, the framework that, uh, that we in the Two Reach project um, have developed uh, in regards to translation um, of the innovation uh, from one originating system to one re, um, uh, receiving system and uh, we have uh, come up with a couple of key elements in scaling uh, and transforming uh, and transferring innovation um, and it all starts of course with the characteristics of the innovation and the system from from where it goes and also to the uh, translation and the adaptation to the receiving system uh, which is followed of course by um, a great deal of decision making and implementation um, and um, what what to reach has shown and what we uh, some of us were um, uh, 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 pretty aware of is that um, uh, decision making and implementation represent a great uh, a great deal of effort when trying to uh, transfer innovation from one system to another um, and also uh, what are the effects on the performance of the uh, receiving system um, 
So what it means to put the uh, strategic research agenda into practice or what are the uh, prerequisites to do that? Um, we have discovered that in order to be able to do that in an effective manner, we need to, to have a shared approach uh, to health services and systems research, um, uh, which starts with building necessary research capacity across Europe. Uh, we know that uh, biomedical research and um, a research that is focused on um, a more fundamental um, uh, uh, research areas in, in health has, has uh, received quite a, a great deal of attention in the past years. But unfortunately, health systems research and health services research uh, was not um, um, as, um, uh, as uh, um, a priority as it, as it should be. So we, we believe that uh, building the, the capacity is one of the, the first prerequisites. Um, and also realizing the potential of our investment uh, in health and, and um, starting with a common vocabulary um, in, in this area. And then um, we need a partnership and a cooperation approach because uh, many times we see that there are efforts of research in, um, in various countries or various regions, but we need to, to get to where we have a European platform for learning and uh, collaboration. And last but not least, and maybe um, uh, during the questions, uh, Sabrina will tell us a bit more about that. Um, uh, we, we were proposing a European joint program on health services and systems research um, and uh, draw some steps in that direction. Um, I was just wanted to, and, and um, I'm uh, about to, to close this, um, just to give you an example of a couple of sub themes and questions. So uh, you might be uh, wondering, what is this re uh, research agenda about? H how how deep, how much in detail uh, did you get to? And of course, you can uh, you can use the link to go to to our uh, website. But for instance, with regards to person and population centeredness, there are a couple of questions uh, that you see on the slide, and I will just fo uh, focus on on uh, one or two of them which are highly relevant in this uh, period um, uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and for instance, the last one, which types of measures can best increase health literacy and digital literacy by, by targeting citizens and or health professionals? The, the pandemic has, has um, um, shown that um, many people um, do not have an adequate level of health literacy so that um, they are able to uh, look for reliable information, to use that information to, to the best of, uh, of their uh, knowledge and, and to uh, improve uh, their health status. We see that fake news has, has um, made um, uh, a lot of um, um, uh, um, a lot of uh, has had a lot of bad effects on, on population because they fall prey to all sorts of uh, information that that is not adequate and um, um, in and reliable. So health literacy is one of the areas that have been uh, that have been identified in our strategic research agenda. Is, it is something that is highly relevant for this peri period as well. Um, I come from Romania, um, and um, uh, of course we have uh, seen how. The, the pandemic has um, has affected the uh, the health system, and uh, indeed we can say that it 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 impacted it in 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 the. Uh, in, in manners uh, which uh, to some extent have not been pre predicted. Um, um, we see um, uh, that uh, fortunately there, there is um, a, 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 um, an, a slight improvement in the number of uh, uh, cases and, and um, in the intensity with which the pandemic has hit the country. Um, and there are a couple of, uh, of things that the, the pandemic um, have meant for the Romanian health system. Um, so, uh, of course, it highlighted uh, the existing structural issues as it did for many of health systems in uh, across the globe. And of course, uh, the fact that uh, the system might not be adequately funded and we have shortages, these have all been brought to surface even more in this period. But it also, on the positive side, it also showed that innovation is possible. And um, uh, for instance, in the use of uh, digital tools in uh, service delivery, and we, we um, uh, the National Health Insurance House has um, uh, adopted telemedicine, but the question is how um, and uh, whether it will last. Uh, this is something that we will see in the future. And uh, well, it also enforced the need to learn and adapt quickly. And also um, uh, the system has responded with, uh, with research. And we have um, at this moment um, uh, several projects which are funded by the Executive Agency for Research um, um, and the Development and Innovation underway. And uh, we will see how those will contribute to, to a better response to the pandemic. Um, I will stop here and of course, 
um, this this was very brief, and and uh, there there is a great deal of information, and um, um, uh, the, the time uh, is might not allow us to, to go into great detail. But um, I am here just to to uh, hear from you and to answer any potential questions. Uh, thank you so much. Terrific. Thank you, Dr. Marius and um, So I'd, again, I would just encourage everybody that if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat box uh, right now. Um, I can see there's a first question there from Sabri Ben Roman, and we'll come to that in, in just a moment. But if anyone has anything you want to ask, do type that in now. So, um, so Sabrina and um, Marius are both with us. And the first question is about um, how does the focus on each of the SRA priority areas differ? Did COVID-19 highlight one SRA priority over another? Um, uh, I was just saying that, that that's a very good question and very interesting. Uh, although I, I don't have a, a quite straightforward answer because um, with, when you think of um, whether uh, COVID-19 highlighted one um, SRA priority over another, um, I, I believe things are, are quite complex. Um, um, I mean, it really depends uh, from where you look at. If you look um, um, uh, at um, a national level or if you look at um, um, European level. Um, so if, if you, um, let's say that we, we focus on, on, Euro, uh, on, on the national level, um, I, I, I do not believe that we can really say that this is uh, uh, number one, this is number two, this is number three. I would rather uh, say that the, the, there are interlinks um, in between them and because uh, health systems are complex and um, if you um, looked at our research agenda, this is one of the points that we're making that health systems are complex. They are not complicated, they are complex. So there are clearly interlinks between them. So um, just to, th th this is the long answer. So the, the short answer would be that um, COVID-19 has highlighted what we are also saying in, in the document that there are strong links between them. And when we need to, when we want to address something, we need to, um, um, to be aware of all the um, 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 interactions between the um, areas that we identified. So I would, uh, thanks Marish, I thought it was relevant that you could answer to this question, bringing also the experience of a national, no, right? Something happening on the ground is because that's in the end, priorities have been really, uh, what is important is priority really look at the context. And uh, uh, context indeed is complex and needs to be, and I fully agree with you Marish, that priorities are, are interlinked and should be uh, looking, it shouldn't actually by focusing on one forgetting the other we're not really uh, that probably what we have been doing so far i think so what really what is the revolutionary let me allow me this word approach of to reach is that is looking this in a more comprehensive manner and is trying really to overcome fragmentation in this field of research which is what has been happening so far, I think, is that it's not that we haven't, uh, didn't have fun on this, it's that we didn't have really a coordinated approach and, uh, towards this research field. And we can improve that. I don't know if that's helping to... Yeah, okay. So I've got an extra question to add to that. I think a lot of people who are joining us today are, um, have heard of the project and others have never heard of it. And what for me really impresses me about the Two Reach project is just how big it is. And to try and re reflect it in this very short webinar is truly impossible. So I wonder, then my question to you, Sabrina, is what would you say to the people who are joining us today who've never heard of Two Reach before or who might find this recording online a bit later how would you, in a nutshell, say to them, what is to reach for people who've never heard of it before? Well, I think that's a, that's a difficult question because indeed it's somebody like me that has been leaving the project from inside and has been seeing all you know, the complexity. I would say that what was very interesting for me, um, it was um, really to see, uh, I think it was one of the first projects that saw really the cooperation between research um, and research experts and uh, on the other hand stakeholders and on the other hand I would say even uh, funding agencies 
or anyway those working for uh, the government at the ministry level from so member states. So the EU, um, the European Commission on one hand, the member states and associated countries on the other hand, together with the research experts. And that was a, a very interesting, a challenging, I would say, but it was especially interesting because it was actually a way to see how um, it's important to um, really um, make uh, our message more clear for those that are working on the ground. Sometimes research experts think that you know, things are quite clear, but perhaps they need to, to improve the, the way they communicate with policymakers. So, uh, indeed, it was not a research project. It was a coordination and support action. And so I would say that the coordination among such di different stakeholders and actors was the most relevant um, outcome, I'd say. That. Uh, because then, in the end, the priorities can change. But really building a framework to allow for this, this, this interaction to happen was the most interesting part. And, right. and Marius, would you add anything to that? I wouldn't have very much uh, to add to that. Uh, just maybe uh, the fact that, um, I, I mean, I would add my perspective as a researcher because I've been part of Two Reach. And um, what, what, what I can say as a researcher is that um, what what Two Reach is proposing is highly relevant for someone who is uh, who is a, a, a researcher. I mean, uh, to begin with, um, although you know, there's this difference between between um, um, a real need and a perceived need. Because we as researchers, we uh, we we um, uh, we really perceive that need. But maybe people, maybe uh, policymakers in in one country or uh, another, they they might not feel that as 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 uh, powerfully as we do. But um, uh, for me as a researcher, I, um, I, I was really longing for, uh, for such an initiative to, to be able to conduct uh, health systems and services research at the national level, but also to have this, uh, this connection with uh, fellow researchers in other European health systems uh, to, to be able to um, analyze, to compare, and to contribute to better performing health systems. Because, uh, of course, uh, we speak about national health systems, but um, uh, uh, truly what the pandemic has, has shown us is that there, there is a lot of uh, connection between our, our health systems. Uh, because, because uh, for instance, a, a virus is not contained by, by our borders. So um, I, I would say that the, the benefit of, uh, of to reach is um, um, really this this European wide perspective on on how health systems um, are are functioning. And um, if if it were to to just name one positive thing of this pandemic, if we can speak about that, um, but then that would be that we we. Um, we, we have a, a much better grasp of the fact that we really need to, to look at how health systems are, are, are functioning and to make them uh, really more resilient and more um, uh, and, and stronger. Terrific. Thanks for that, um, Marius. So we've got time for, uh, for one last question, if anybody wants to ask one. Uh, I'd also say that um, if you've got any other questions, you can follow us up afterwards. Um, some people prefer us to ask directly. Now, my colleague Kiara has just posted a link to the evaluation. And um, so that evaluation, it literally takes 90 seconds. It's a chance for you to just give your feedback directly to Marius and to Sabrina about anything in their presentations. If you want to ask any questions in that survey, you can do that directly there. Um, I can see your questions come up. I'll get to that in just a second. But while, while we do that, please do click on that link and respond to the survey. Because not only do, is that a chance to ask questions, but it's a chance for you to let us know what do you want in these webinars. And these have been really tailored from our members and co-constructed with you, the audience. So thank you for your feedback and, and please keep that up. So I'll go now to Minea Samoila's question. She says, my question is related to how can human resources in healthcare could be reallocated quicker so the public health challenge can be tackled. For example, the better containment of COVID-19. The pandemic has revealed the acute need for more trained staff in public health, epidemiology, microbiology, ETC, and somehow this gap has to be closed so that the pandemic can be managed. So that seems to pick up on a lot of the um, um, strategic research agenda key topics. 
So what would you respond to that, Marius or Sabrina? The really complicated question, but indeed what, what, what the pandemic has shown is that we, we have um, uh, some, some significant shortages in, in those areas that have been mentioned. Um, so whereas I do not have a, a, a quick answer to that, um, I, can, I can think of a couple of uh, prerequisites, if you like, uh, in order to be able um, as, as a health system to, to move swiftly when, when such a thing uh, appears. And uh, one of the things would be a, a proper health workforce planning and, and um, one that would take also into account um, uh, emergency preparedness and um, uh, the prospect of, uh, of uh, such, a, such a pandemic. Because really, and, and I, I could see that in my home country in Romania, uh, we, we had significant shortages in these areas in public health, in microbiology, in um, epidemiology. So if you, we do not, do not have um, um, a comprehensive approach on, on the health workforce issues, and if we're not concerned about how to, how to train those people, how to recruit them, and how to, to retain them, because retention is a key problem, then we will not be able to answer to that. And one of the, uh, the uh, to me, paradoxical things which uh, the pandemic has, uh, has surfaced is that um, um, there are um, uh, clear advantages of a, a highly centralized health system. Now, of course, uh, opinions might differ on that, but what we could see is, was that um, it, the Romanian health system, for instance, which um, um, uh, is quite centralized despite the efforts to, to have it more decentralized. But now during the pandemic, it, it, it worked for the best to have a, a centralized system. So uh, of course, uh, health systems are organized differently, so you cannot just uh, things, uh, um, uh, change things overnight. But what I would say is that um, having a, a clear overview of your health workforce um, um, by, by means of a, uh, of a registry, which, which um, uh, can render you information and accurate information about what is the available health workforce, how they are distributed, and how you can, in these difficult conditions, um, uh, you know, uh, adjust and reallocate human resources. So I believe these would be a couple of uh, prerequisites to, uh, to, to eventually get to, to an answer to, to this difficult question. So, I mean, I think I have not have much to add to what Marish said. What I can say is that Indeed, um, health workforce imbalances and shortages are major concerns, not only for, for Romania, but for many European countries. Um, I mean, task shifting uh, can contribute to get the best outcomes and results. Uh, however, I think that um, what, what we need, we need to stress is that to realize these potential benefits, action, actions have to be informed by evidence. So indeed, once again, this, uh, the message of to reach is in uh, is a, is a, the correct one, I think, because by having more research innovation and uh, as, as a, in this field, and as Marish said, a comprehensive approach to the subject, so uh, like a framework in which research innovation can happen and this exchange can really be based on solid uh, evidence and consolidated. Uh, framework can really help to, to come with a solid answer to these relevant uh, challenges that were happening even before COVID-19 and that COVID-19 has just made clear. Yeah, indeed. Now okay, so we're going to um, wrap up there. Um, Sabrina or Marius, do you want to add any sort of final comments on that note? Maybe what to expect in the future, which you pointed to, Marius, or anything additional, Sabrina, in our last minute? Well, I, I would maybe add uh, what I would hope to, to experience in the future or see in the future. And, and so my hope would be that um, um, in, in the future, our national health systems, as well as uh, the European Union as a whole, would be able to, to respond in, in, in a more coherent manner to, to, uh, to such an unfortunate event as a, um, as a pandemic. And that we would... Um, we would um, um, uh, have done uh, uh, a bit more work towards this um, uh, coordination and integration of uh, health services in our health system so that um, at the end of the day, uh, our health systems will be better off and, and the population will be better off. Thanks, Marius. And thanks again for joining us. Sabrina, any final words that you want to share? I think that uh, I, 
I thank you very much for this opportunity and I hope that, uh, I think that uh, in the future we will need to organize even more of these events and perhaps be able to enlarge the audience and make sure that we can really involve those that are not necessarily experts uh, in the subject but are impacted by the need to improve our health systems and services and we need really to make um, and it's very important that we have this opportunity to make clear uh, our message and uh, perhaps as I will stress this again, uh, communicate better what is needed and, and um, yeah, move forward. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Sabrina's slides are available on our website. I've also put up into the chat um, the, the, the survey for evaluation. Do take, it's 90 seconds, do fill that out. Um, we want you to stay connected to this discussion. As Sabrina and Marius have both said, there's a lot more to come on to reach and it's work in really clarifying the evidence base and helping us better organize and use evidence better is growing rapidly. So stay in touch. If you're not already an EMA member, um, please um, join us, become a member and be part of these conversations. Um, if you want to keep talking about these topics and all of the things um, that fall under it, come and join us at our conference in November. It really is the preeminent conference on health management. So if you want to be part of the big discussion, then that's the place to be. Um, I thank you for your time. I especially thank uh, Marius Ngurianu and Sabrina Montante for your excellent presentations, your generosity of time and your willingness to share with people. We've had over 50 people register for this webinar. And so we know you're sharing this message well. Thanks very much.